Hello. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. Brilliant. Um, hello and welcome to Town Eastbourne's live making workshop. Um, my name's Amy and this is the fourth artist-led making workshop in which we're going to explore doodling through making our own ink and our own drawing tools. So, oh, it's good to see you as well. Thank you for all your lovely comments. It's nice seeing really, really familiar handles. So, hello again. Brilliant. Oh, um, so so far we've explored squashing play-doh, we have explored spinning wind chimes and last week we explored floating bubble snakes. So if you're interested in any of the previous sessions you can access the recordings on this Instagram um, account or on Town at Eastbourne's Facebook and website. Um, a big hello again if you came along to the previous sessions um, and welcome if you are joining us for the first time. Hello everyone, hello. Great, um, just an update, um, these sessions are being extended and we were, we're going to have two more, um, one on Thursday the 4th of June and one on Thursday the 11th, again at 2pm. So there'll be two more sessions in this series of live making workshops. Hello if you've just joined us. Brilliant. Cool, so as people join our workshop, um, a little bit of information. Hello. Um, these workshops are part of hashtag Makeshift Studio project on Instagram. <laughs> um, and Hashtag Make Your Studio is a making challenge set by the Towner team each week using basic objects and materials around the home. Um, this week's making prompt was Making Marks, uh, inspired by a really lovely portrait study by Feel and Gibb. Um, so slotting in with the theme of Making Marks, we are going to make our own ink and our own drawing tools. So I definitely recommend, if you've taken part in them before, that's brilliant. Um, and if you're new to, or if you're new to hashtag Makeshift Studio, um, I definitely recommend checking them out on this Instagram account. Um, and yeah, the provocations are really inspiring and sometimes just make you relook at the things around your home uh, in a different way. Hello, if you're just joining us, hello. <laughs> brilliant. Um, a little reminder, I say this every week. Um, Everyone is really welcome to take part in these activities or if you'd just like to watch this video um, for inspiration, you're very welcome to. But a few things, if you're a child, please ask an adult to work with you. Um, ask permission if you're borrowing anything. Um, and when choosing extra materials, please don't use any sharp, precious or breakable things. Um, you started, everyone started doing it already, which is fantastic, but feel free to use the comment section to type any questions or comments um, or let us know how you're getting along if you're making along today so feel free brilliant so should we get started Let's stay inside. Um, hopefully you'll have had a look at the materials list so far so don't worry if you haven't I'll go through them now so we're gonna Today um, is a little bit different from the previous workshop, so there are sort of two activities that we're going to do. We're going to do making our ink first, and then we're going to move on to making our drawing tools. So I'm going to go through making our berry or turmeric ink first, and I'll give a few options for um, additional quick ways of making ink from things that you might find in your kitchen cupboard afterwards. So you could also um, try that out if you'd like to. Okay, so hello if you're just joining us. It's nice to see you all. So if you are going to make berry ink with us, you are going to need, we are going to need a bowl. We're going to need a sieve. We're going to need a handful of berries. So they can be fresh or frozen. These are mixed berries and they are, um, 
they were frozen, but I've just left them out. So if yours is still frozen right now and you'd like to make along with us, um, maybe you could ask an adult if you're a child just to use the microwave and pop them in for a couple of seconds so they're sort of smushier and ready to use. If you're using fresh berries, that's great. These are mixed berries. I know some people might just have blackberries or raspberries and that's great. There might be slight variations um, on the colours but I think all of it sort of works so this is just a mixture of them all. Um, we are going to need a teaspoon. I think this is a teaspoon. Um, and we are going to need half a teaspoon of vinegar. Uh, this is white wine vinegar. I think it it works just the same so um, I've been experimenting and this is all I have in my cupboard so if you have a certain kind of vinegar I think it all works the same as a preservative so don't worry if it's not the standard vinegar this seems to work um, and we're also going to need half a teaspoon of salt great uh, if you've got a wooden spoon great but I can't find mine so I'm just going to use my metal spoon um, I'll go through the ingredients for the turmeric ink after I've shown you how to make this. Okay, so this might get a bit messy, so if you would like, I'm wearing an apron, uh, if you'd like to just check your surroundings, if you'd like to wear, wear an apron or old clothes as well, that's great, but it's all natural so it will come out, so don't worry, um, but just in case um, you have anyone who doesn't particularly like mess. Um, okay, so we've got our berries. They should be um, sort of fairly smushy, unfrozen if they've been frozen. And we're just going to pop our sieve on top of our bowl and pop our handful of berries in. Mine has quite a lot of juice already. Cool. That's all in. And we're just going to use going to use the back of my metal spoon. If you've got a wooden spoon, that's great. I'm going to smush the berries into the sieve, sort of squeezing all the juices out, it smells quite nice, and just smushing it. I've got some grapes in here, I'm not sure if they'll make much colour, but I'll just smush them anyway. I think these are cranberries, some raspberries and blackberries, so you're trying to get as much juice out of your berries as possible, I'll just pop it down for a minute. Great. Ooh, this might take a bit of time. Okay, so I think we've got enough so far. I think I'll stop there. So I've got a, a fair bit of juice. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove our smushed berries. We're going to remove our sieve. I'll just pop that to one side. So we've got all the kind of dried up berries in there. And we have got all the juices from the berries in the bowl. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we're going to mix half a teaspoon of vinegar in. And this just helps, oh, it's quite a lot. That's fine. This just helps to um, preserve it. So the salt and the vinegar just helps to preserve it if you don't use your ink all in one go and if you want to keep it. Hello, if you just joined us. And we're gonna put half a teaspoon of salt. And it also helps um, the ink retain its color. So once you use it on a bit of paper, it just keeps it vibrant. Great. So that's it really. We've got our berry juices, half a teaspoon of vinegar and half a teaspoon of salt. And then we can just start using it. So I'll just show you what it looks like. And I found with berries actually, um, I've just got a paintbrush. So you can start using your berry ink straight away. If you've got leftover, you can keep it in a jar and just label it. So here's some that I used earlier, I made earlier. Um, I found if you 
I think this is right. If you use uh, it, if you use your berry ink on paper which um, has been processed with acid, so like printer paper, isn't acid free, it tends to turn like a really nice dark blue. But if, so the piece I showed you earlier, if you use it on acid free paper, which is like tends to be like watercolour paper or um, some art papers or some, some specialist printing papers are also acid free, it tends to retain this sort of um, richer purpley colour. But both, both modes are quite nice and it might be a case of just testing out what kind of paper you use your ink on. Okay, so we've got our berry ink that I'm going to put to one side. If you would like to use turmeric, or if you have the ingredients for turmeric ink, I'm going to go through the process now. Hello! Okay, so to make our turmeric ink, we are going to need a bowl, but I've just got a small cup. I'm not going to make very much. Um, we are going to need a tablespoon of turmeric, so I've got ground turmeric here. Um, this might potentially be out of date, but that's also fine. It's one of those activities where you can use up old spices. We're going to need three tablespoons of warm water. So this is just the water that you get out of the tap. You don't need to boil any water or it doesn't need to be any hotter than that really. And it works with cold water as well, but I just find warm water sort of um, helps to smooth it out. We're going to need, again, half a teaspoon of vinegar and half a teaspoon of salt. So you can sort of guess what those um, steps are going to help us with. So first things we're going to do, we're going to get our tablespoon of turmeric or any other spice really. Um, I've heard cinnamon works quite well, mixed spice. If you've made ink before with spices, um, let us know what has worked and what kind of spices you've chosen and what's worked for you. So we've got a tablespoon of turmeric and I'm just going to measure out three tablespoons of warm water. And three. I'm just going to mix them all together. Um, the quantities really are guidelines, um, so a little bit like when we went through our squashing play-doh the first week, if you feel like this consistency is too thick then feel free to add more water and actually I think that this might be quite thick for my turmeric ink so I'm going to add a bit more water. Thin it out. Feel free to use the comment section if you'd like to ask a question, definitely. So I'm just going to put in the half a tablespoon of salt and half a tablespoon of vinegar or teaspoon. I always get tablespoon and teaspoon confused. And this morning I, I got told that this isn't even a tablespoon, so, you know, I think spoons are spoons. Um, there is a question, is that a question? Yeah, feel free to um, use the comment section if you are making along or if you are stuck or if you just want some advice or if you want to tell us what um, spices you use when making ink as well. Cool, so we have our turmeric ink. I'm just going to test it out on our paper. it's quite a vibrant yellow. Um, as you can see, because this is acid, this paper has acid in it, our berry ink that we splodged on earlier has turned slightly bluish. And that will continue to go a bit bluer. Um, maybe I'll show it again at the end. Brilliant, so we've got two kinds of inks. Um, other options that you can use, um, if you don't have ink at home or if you'd like to experiment with making your own ink. Hello, if you've joined us. Um, you can use instant coffee and water, so instant coffee and water produces this sort of colour, a sort of brown, 
brownish and it's fairly um it's not too clumpy which is quite good and that again is in the ratio of one tablespoon of instant coffee three tablespoons of cold water just mixed together I've also found that cocoa powder and water um, makes a kind of richer brown but this does tend to get a bit clumpy so when reusing it I've stored it for a couple of days now and I'll probably have to put in a little bit more water um, but it does produce a really really nice thick rich brown so that's one tablespoon of cocoa powder three tablespoons of cold water brilliant oh thank you for your comments great so um ah I'll show you what the cocoa powder looks like this is what the cocoa powder looks like so quite thick a slightly different brown from the instant coffee this has been drying for quite a while so this is berry ink and it's gone quite a nice blue turmeric ink um, another attempt at tea and this is just a used tea bag as well so if you've got like a old tea bag you can sort of squeeze all of the tannins out onto the paper um, and it sometimes you can get these really lovely unexpected textures coming out through the kind of um, the way that you might leave your tea bag on a bit of paper or like bits of um, the tea leaves might spill out so you can make your own little sample list and you can just keep on experimenting if you've got things at home like different spices or different recipes you'd like to try out and definitely encourage it okay so a gentle reminder with any of these inks um, please make sure not to eat them um, as a smell if you're making along as a smell might indicate the vinegar and the salt make it particularly unpleasant to the taste so um, keep an eye on little ones who might be tempted to eat them and if you're keeping them in a jar um, just label them so um, you know that it's ink for art and not for eating Oh, thank you for all your wonderful comments. Yeah, it's really surprising sometimes. Um, I'm, I haven't made a lot of ink before and it's sort of really surprising sometimes when you see the colours. Okay, brilliant. So, I'll show you some more examples of... I've got a couple of examples. This is a lot of um, the sort of... the sort of... Um, inks with powder and they seem to have dried quite a lot so I've just played around with the texture so you can sort of build on top especially if you've got thicker paper keep on building on top and then using different tools to move them around okay great so now that we have our ink um, you're very welcome to just start using it like I have with a paintbrush you can use it on paper um, but since this is makeshift studio and you might not necessarily have the paintbrushes and art materials um, that you might have access to or want to use I thought we could be inventive and for the second half of this uh, workshop this make along workshop I thought we could be inventive and make our own drawing tools so if you've got your own ink and you haven't made ink in the first bit that's great as well you can definitely use it okay so I'm just gonna pop all of these things to one side um, is anyone making along and how is your ink going? Feel free to comment in the comment section. It'd be great to hear. Okay, brilliant. So, um, since our theme is making marks, um, let's make our own drawing tools. Everything that I'm going to, all the objects that I'm going to introduce are optional. Oh, I've got an amazing comment that says it smells amazing. It does, the berry ink does smell amazing. Um, all of these objects that I'm going to introduce for your um, making drawing tools are optional, but I've been starting off with a rubber glove. Um, Elastic bands and tape have been really useful for, for securing things onto the rubber glove. Um, and a couple of things that I have been collecting, I've got some cotton buds, 
some lovely feathers that might make some nice textures. I've got some the classic spaghetti. Bits of cardboard or off-cut bits. You can then manipulate these into different shapes if you want. Again, textures like oh, textures like tin foil might be quite useful. And it's a little bit like our wind chime session where you might have to have a look around your home and have a look at things that might um, lend themselves quite well to making marks. We've got pegs, some wooden popsicle sticks, some softer pom-poms and sponges, they're quite useful. Um, so anything goes really, but if you're a child, please do make sure that you ask permission first before borrowing anything. Um, some things that you think might make a good texture don't and vice versa. So I'd recommend if you want, um, I just recommend trying things out if you can. Um, and then making sure that you give everything a good wash afterwards. Um, the ink it does bleed through um, or tends to bleed through your paper if you're just using printer paper which I've been using so far so if you want to um, when you're playing around with your inks just make sure you've got an extra sheet underneath if you're um, concerned about your tabletop um, and again just yeah checking checking what's around you um, in case things don't want to get stained okay so I'm going to start constructing a drawing tool by attaching different things to my rubber glove. I'm going to wear it on my left hand. Um, cool, and I'm going to use a combination of my elastic bands and I think maybe I want each finger to have a different object or a different texture on it. When you are attaching things, this rubber glove is quite big. So when you're attaching things um, to your fingers or your wrists, just make sure you don't tie the elastic band too tight. Sometimes it's hard to tell, isn't it? Um, I think I might want a pom-pom on the end. This one. Ooh. Maybe gets a bit tricky when you need both hands. Um, okay. Or if you don't have a glove, you can equally just make your own drawing tool by attaching things to a pencil or a chopstick or a twig. It's up to you. So you can be as inventive or you can sort of embody this drawing activity as much as you want. Maybe a sponge. Do, 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 do. How's everyone doing if you're making a, a long Maybe a sponge on one of my fingers? Um, oh, and objects like they don't necessarily even have to attach to your glove. Objects like potatoes. Um, this one has started sprouting and um, usually you associate potatoes with making like potato prints but these have like beautiful little sprouty sprouty bits which I've been playing around with which has been quite fun um, and if you want any more inspiration the makeshift studio rations list has loads of objects that you can find around your house so this is one of them this is a sock You've got bits of cutlery. Oh, it's getting a bit busy. I'll just add this to the end. Um, so it really is up to you. And then it's a case of playing around with your ink, dipping your different fingers in. And just seeing what kind of marks you can make. So I've got <laughs> I've got my berry ink and I'm dipping in the feather. I'm going to see what kind of effects it makes. So we've got feather. <laughs> cool. 
Ooh. And maybe our popsicle stick is going to make a different kind of effect. And maybe I'll use the turmeric. <laughs> We've got some brilliant comments. Thanks guys for adding to the comment section. Um, if you're watching the recorded version, I'll read some of them out. Um, We've got just some amazing Edward Featherhands. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. So it really is up to you what you want to put on your drawing tool. Um, I've just stuck a bit of cardboard to this chopstick and it can be a drawing tool for my other hand. Um, cool. Or you could have like themed hands. So I made this glove earlier. It's a bit crumpled. I used it but it is just full of, I just themed it so it was just like soft things. So I've got hair scrunchy pom-poms and um, a sock again, a little sponge. So it really is up to you. Um, some ideas of things you could do. I've just been playing around making marks, um, but here are some additional ideas. Um, you could draw something from around the house and you could draw it lots of different times with sort of your different drawing tools and see how it turns out. You could try and move your ink without actually touching it. So you could use something like a balloon pump or a hairdryer, two items which are on the makeshift studio rations list. You could make a drawing without looking, which is really nice since all of these things um, when you engage with these objects on your hands or your fingers, you could sort of close your eyes and really, really focus on the sensation that each finger um, is going through. Um, you could invent a completely new drawing tool uh, with things made either on the hashtag Makeshift Studio or you might have something in your house that you've always wanted to use in a drawing but haven't quite figured out how to. Um, you could set yourself limits, like make one in five minutes or only using three items um, and you can also do a wax resist so maybe I'll show you a few examples of things that I've done. This is the ink used with a candle and I've just made um, marks so I haven't been able to see them on the blank paper and then I've covered it with ink so that's a wax resist. Um, you can also leave objects on top so if you fill your page with ink you can leave some of your objects so these are elastic bands um we've got little folds of paper and i've just left them for a couple of minutes and they seem to have absorbed um and sort of left marks so they've been drawing tools where i haven't really done very much i've just left them um, again, you can go kind of as abstract and as experimental as you want. You can just keep on going with it, really. This was one that I made where I tried flooding the paper with as much ink as possible um, and seeing what happens when it comes through on the other side. Quite exciting, the flip side. Um, and yeah, so if you've got any other suggestions or ways to use your ink um, or like ideas or uh, things that you've attached to your glove for your drawing tool let us know great so um, we'd love to hear um, what you've been up to and what ideas um, you've tested out with your ink um, so feel free to take photos um, and uh, tag us at Hello Tana and with their hashtag Makeshift Studio. Um, just check with anyone who's in the photos just um, to ask permission before uploading them. Um, and brilliant, so I'm going to continue making some drawings. This is my drawing tool. Um, if you missed any point of this workshop and if you'd like to hear the recipes again or just go over the different steps of making your own inks or going over um, the different options. Uh, this recording will be uploaded in a couple of days time and there are illustrated making guides on the website um, which are available so you can access this whenever. Um, details for the next workshop which is next Thursday um, will be uploaded next Tuesday so you can gather things in advance um, and yeah 
feel free to tag us in any of your creations. Um, I'm going to carry on making some things. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been really, really brilliant sort of seeing familiar handles um, and just hearing all of your comments. They just sound really, really brilliant and I'm glad you've enjoyed it. So thank you very much. Um, please do share all of your wonderful ideas um, and hope to see you again next week. Thanks. Bye. Oh, how I end this? Thank you. See you next week. Bye.